This is Task Spoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log by doing one randomly generated task at a time. After completing the medium tier, I'm ready to attempt some of the longest and hardest challenges yet as I move on to the hard tier. Welcome to Season 3 of Task Spoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 109 of the Taspoon series. In the last video, and there's going to be some major spoilers here, so if you want to go and watch it, this is your chance to pause or click off the video. But we started by doing some mage training arena for an infinity top. We then rolled a gauntlet task where we ended up getting the pet and a bofa before an armor seed on 75 KC. I don't know how, but that's what happened. Uh, we then did some other things. I honestly, I don't remember. I just remember the Bofa. So go and go and watch that. But either way, we ended by rolling a task to get a Zolra unique, which the only unique we have left is actually the Onyx. So yeah, we're just going to be farming Zolra until we get an Onyx, and it'll be great. I'll get to stock up on some scales. I get to try out my Bofa. I'm, I'm excited for this. In the last video, I briefly mentioned the idea of doing ranged only Zolra, which I think isn't going to be viable until I get crystal armor. Uh, the whole point of ranged only Zolra is to use very accurate ranged weapons to hit through the mage phases, uh, but without the crystal armor, I don't think the Bofa is quite accurate enough. Usually you would either use a T-Bow with max range gear or a Bofa with crystal armor. But I think the Bofa is still going to be very good for the range phase, considering I used to be using a Rune Crossbow with uh, Diamond Bolts E. <laughs> so I think the Bofa is still going to be very strong, but yeah, I don't think it's quite good enough to do range only Zolra, which is fine. This will actually save me some charges on it, and I don't really mind swapping. So yeah, here we go. Well, just as I'm about to start, I noticed that I forgot to swap to the Archaeus Spellbook. Uh, so I can't use thralls. So instead of just going back and swapping spell books, I'm going to send one kill as range only and see if it works. This is essentially the exact setup that I would use. So yeah, we can find out if this works or not and then decide what we want to do from there. Uh, and it'll be even easier if I do have thralls. So yeah, let's just test it out. Pretty much as I expected, it's just just not quite accurate enough. Uh, it's definitely still very good. Glad I have it for the blue phases when I'm doing Zolra in general, but no point not bringing Mage for me at least. Uh, I don't mind swapping. If you're trying to do it with as minimal swaps as possible, it's definitely doable, but there's no point doing it for me. I'm just going to do both. Also, another factor that I always seem to forget when I'm looking up things online, most people assume that if you have a Bofa, you have Rigor as well, and that's another thing that I'm missing. So maybe with Rigor it'd work, but yeah, for me, just not quite good enough. I keep tying my PB at 122, and they're not even good kills necessarily. I mean, they're, they're good. But I know I can do better with this new Bofa. It just shreds through the mage phase. <gasps> what? That was so fast! What the heck? I didn't even want it yet. I wanted to accumulate more scales. I mean, I'm not disappointed, but what the heck? I started this task at 361 KC. I did 12 kills. What the heck? I wanted to use my Bofa more. <laughs> oh well, we're done. Well, I guess now I'll feel even better about doing daily Zolra kills. Uh, none of the other items are on the spreadsheet. Everything else is too rare to be on any of the tiers. I mean, they're all in the other tiers of the spreadsheet, like the extras and passive and pets and whatnot. But yeah, now I don't have to feel bad about doing extra Zolra kills for scales because there's no more tasks on the spreadsheet. So yeah, I have an Onyx now, uh, which there's actually two options. Either I can make it into a regen bracelet, which is pretty useful for some things, uh, especially with a hit points cape, or I can just save it to make it into a torture on the elite tier. But either way, I will put it to use. So that's good. And we're done. We can get a new task. Let's go. 
Well, when I rolled a Zelra task, I did not expect to complete it in 33 minutes, but we will take that off to a great start this episode. And let's see what we're going to go do next. Get a new dark bow paint from LMS. Okay. So I actually needed to render and upload a YouTube video and make and eat dinner and watch a baseball game. So I had a bunch of time to sort of half play, but half not. And I figured that would be a good time to start pickpocketing elves to try and get the uh, teleport seeds to trade in for shards to try and corrupt my bofa. And I actually got really lucky. I got eight seeds in 1600 pickpockets which took like three hours uh that's insanely lucky but that means i can go and trade these in for 1200 crystal shards and along with the shards that i already have i can actually corrupt my bofa already which is really nice i don't have to worry about charges at all so that's great so i can trade in my seeds here at amrod and enhance crystal teleport seed 1200 shards it is beautiful and we can go ahead and sing at this crystal singing bowl. Corrupted Bofa, 1,903 crystal shards. Oh, it's so nice. Oh my goodness, look at it. It's beautiful. And the last thing I'm going to do here, if you didn't know, you can actually buy these crystals to recolor the Corrupted Bofa, the Corrupted Blade, and the Crystal Armor. And I kind of like the white, so I'm going to pay 500k for this. Uh, you could call this a waste of money, but look at it. Now, I'm just going to leave that in the inventory so I can look at it in between every game, and we can actually go and start LMS. So, there's actually four dark bow paints in the LMS shop. Uh, green, yellow, white, and blue. They are all 25 points each, and all four of them are on the hard tier. And those are the only LMS tasks on the hard tier. I'm kind of surprised it took this long to roll one of them, but here we go. We get to do one of these. Uh, and as you might be able to tell by the bottom left corner here, I am not very good at PKing. At least, specifically not LMS. <laughs> if we take a look at the scoreboard here... 188 games played with two wins is not a great win-loss ratio, but I'm going to try my best. Uh, and unfortunately, it is a UK rotation for the LMS competitive worlds. So I'm going to be doing this on 160, 170 ping, which isn't great. But either way, let's just, let's do it. Okay, well, I played one game and I got five points and came second, so that's pretty good considering how rusty I felt. Uh, I actually feel somewhat comfortable peer PKing for some reason, so hopefully we get more of those. Another four points that game came in second again with two kills that time. I'm kind of crushing it. Two kills, fourth place, three points, not too bad. Uh, both my kills were just bots, but that's fine. Okay, I figured out the LMS meta. Just find bots. It's easy. Another four point game there, and that actually could have been way more. I can't believe I died there, but yeah, one more point to go.
All right, there we go. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, I forgot to record me dying. But there we go, 26 points. I can buy one of the things. Doesn't really matter which, so I'll start with the top one. Nice. Let's do something else. <laughs> oh, I actually just noticed we are officially past halfway on the collection log. 739? Sick. Okay, now let's go get a new task. All right, here we go on the spreadsheet. We can complete that LMS task and let's see what we're doing next. Get a unique shard three. Okay, so this is either Scorpia or Chaos Fanatic. I always forget which is which. Let me look it up. Okay, so the shard threes are from Scorpia. So we're gonna go do some of that. Uh, they are a one and 256 individually or one and 128. Uh, for either of them, which is what we're looking for. So hopefully we don't go too dry. Uh, Scorpia is in deep wildy and multi-combat. So I'm going to find the most budget setup I can, and then we'll send it. Okay, I think this is what I'm going to go with. The three items I'm going to protect are the Trine of the Swamp, the Glory, and the Nate is Not. Uh, mostly diary items, monk robes are essentially free. And if I remember to turn on protect from item when I die, I'll even get to keep my rune gloves. So yeah, essentially free, no risk there. And let's go send it. Okay, here we go. Uh, the rest of the inventory, I have a lockpick so I can get into this hut if I need to escape a PKer who maybe forgot to bring one. Uh, I've got some dehyde if they are using magic on me. Got lots of prayer potions so I can stay here hopefully fairly long and not die. And yeah, well, here we go. And of course, the first kill that I do here, it says someone else has already tagged it. Great. Well, this is going to be a pretty successful trip. 39 kills. I ran out of prayer potions and ice barrages at pretty much the same time. So, yeah, that was pretty well planned. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff in the looting bag, which I will show you in a second. And in the looting bag is essentially just a bunch of alks. <laughs> bunch of rune stuff, a few supplies here and there, but yeah, not too bad. So the first trip I did was last night at like 12.30 a.m. And I didn't see a single PKer or PVMer the entire time. And I'm hoping that that continues today. Unfortunately, it is a weekend, so there is a lot of people on right now. But so far, so good. I haven't seen a single person yet, which is nice. Well, this is going to be another trip done. I think I got 43 kills this time, which is pretty good. And again, no PKers, which is even better. Oh well. Unfortunate that that was like the first kill of the trip, so I had all my supplies on me, but I, like I said, I don't really lose anything from dying, so it doesn't really matter. Generally, when I do a new boss in the series, I like to do some sort of post commentary about a kill and talk a little bit about what I'm doing, but it turns out Scorpia is really easy and there's not much to it, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, I like to start in the northwest corner. And as soon as Scorpia spawns, I just hit it with an Ice Barrage and start hitting it with the Trident. Uh, usually within the one freeze, I can get it to the health threshold where it spawns the healers. I then freeze the healers and let Scorpia run over towards me, uh, making sure not to get hit because you kind of need to keep Protect from range on to uh, avoid the damage from the little spiders. But once I have it out of the range of the frozen healers, I just freeze Scorpia again and then click on it and wait. And usually that's enough to get a kill. Uh, there aren't really many nuance to it. It's just sort of freeze it at the right time and run away. And yeah, there you go. Scorpia dead. Uh, I would recommend going and trying it out yourself if you want. Because it's a pretty easy boss. Yo, let's go. Get me out of here. Well, that was pretty good. Only died once, got the drop on 91 KC, so above the drop rate, and it didn't make me want to tear my eyes out. So, yeah, cool. 
So I'm going to go do a quick farm run and then we'll go roll a new task. Okay, back on the spreadsheet, making good progress today. We can complete that task and let's see what we're going to go do. Hopefully we can fit it in right now. Two uniques from Howled Sepulcher. Okay. We actually just recently had a Howled Sepulcher task where we bought the focus and the symbol, meaning the only thing we have left to buy that's actually useful at least is the Hallowed Ring, which is 250 marks. So that'll take a little bit. And then hopefully in that time, we'll actually get this first page and then we'll be done. And if not, we'll end up having to buy one of these two. I think the die is 300 marks. So this could be a little bit, but honestly, there's not going to be much to show you guys because it's just Alad Sepulcher. So yeah, I'm going to go get started and I'll let you know how it goes. Did you know that almost 60% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed? What's that about? I was trying to figure out why that Scorpia task didn't feel as bad as the Crazy Archaeologist task that I had, and the easy answer is because you didn't do that many kills, which is true, but I think the realistic answer is the Scorpia respawn timer is only 7 seconds, which makes the kills go by a lot faster when you're not just sitting around AFK waiting. Uh, and yeah, obviously the crazy archaeologist, I did do like 1,400 kills and I'm really hoping that I don't have to do that many Scorpia kills, but if I do, I feel like it won't be as bad compared to crazy archaeologist. I need to look up what chaos fanatics respawn time is, but that did give me hope for those tasks in the future. Okay. The wiki says Scorpia's respawn timer is 10 seconds. Uh, maybe it was just after I killed him and looted him and looked at the respawn timer. It was around seven, but yeah. Crazy Archaeologist and Chaos Fanatic, both 30 seconds for some reason. I don't know why Scorpia is different, but yeah. Oh, I wasn't recording, but I got another Strange Old Lockpick, which is nice. Hey, the first page, let's go. I'm like way more excited than I probably should be for this random page from the first floor of Howl's Sepulcher, but considering how long I've been doing this, I've looted every single chest on the first floor so far, and I it, it just now got it, so I'm happy about that. Now all we gotta do is get 250 Hallowed Marks by the ring, and we are done. Oh, 86 Agility. Neato. 250 Hallowed Marks acquired, we can go and buy the thing. And we trade this guy and buy ourselves a Hallowed Ring, which is very nice. Uh, the Hallowed Ring makes it so you don't take damage when you fail obstacles, as well as it makes it faster instead of like falling down and then resetting, it like teleports you back. So essentially it just makes it so you never need food and if you fail, you get to recover faster, which is both very nice. So yeah, we are essentially done. I think that was the last Howled Sepulcher task on the hard tier. Uh, and then on the elite tier, we will get uh, the other four items. So yeah, cool. Done with Howled Sepulcher. So let's go over to the spreadsheet and get a new task. All right, here we go. Complete the task and let's see what we're doing. Maybe if it's quick, I'll fit it in right now, but probably going to save it for the next video. Five new uniques for medium clues. Okay. I've actually been slacking on my clues. I have one of each clue to do in the bank other than master. Uh, so I can go and do those next video. But for now, I got seven medium caskets. Let's just open these and see how far we get. And then we'll save the rest for next time. But yeah, 200 medium clues open, 55 uniques. Let's see if we can get any in these seven. No! Well, that was disappointing, but ultimately not surprising. Uh, but yeah, we'll save that one for the next video. Uh, I gotta go hunt eclectic implings for medium clues, so probably gonna take me a while to complete this one. And yeah, probably not gonna have time to fit it in here. But we'll save that for the next video. For now, this is gonna have to be it for this one. So thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to go and hit the like button as that's the best way to help my videos grow with the YouTube algorithm. And it's completely free and it takes like two seconds. So go and do it right now. Thank you. But that's gonna have to be it for me. I will see you guys in the next video. And a big thank you to all of my channel members, but a special thank you to my tier three Big Spoon channel members, 
Alchemist BTW, Jack Stalmer, Zach Martin, Luxeter, Tony Adkins, and Dolph. Thank you guys, and thank you everyone on screen here for the support.